The next thing I'd like to go over is sheaths and types of sheaths. So the first one, my favourite one, is the Kydex sheath. This is the Kydex here, kind of thermal plastic. I really do prefer this one. I've just found over the years this is the longest lasting one for me. And it's probably one of the most popular on the market today. So Kydex, or you also get various forms of plastics as well that basically do the same job as this. So this is my favourite and that is Kydex. Next one I'd like to show you is leather. And as the years have moved on, I feel that leather's kind of gone more out of fashion. I think just because it's so expensive, uh, especially here in the UK. It's very nice, the leather aesthetic's probably the best looking. Uh, all the leather, um, sorry, all the sheaths that you can get, I think leather's probably the best looking. But it does take a lot of work to look after it, and I don't like leather due to the climate I live in where it's constantly damp and leather doesn't do very well. So that's kind of one of the cons with it. But it is really nice. And if you're one of these posers that go about with their fall wrapping trousers on with the labels still hanging off the back, I think this is the type of knife for you. Okay, but for me personally, no, I don't like it. Too weak for me, too much care and maintenance for my liking. Another popular one you'll get then is nylon. This is a military bayonet frog and it's got multiple different parts, plastic clips and it has a plastic insert here. So the nylon sheaths seem to be the most popular while I served in the military anyway and virtually 90% of my combat and survival knives came in a nylon sheath. So there you go. And the last one then is actually a combination of all three just like this has with the plastic, plastic inserts. You'll get some Kydex now with leather as well. So a combination of them, but they've got a tendency to be more expensive. So that's the types of sheaths that you're going to come across when you are using a tracker knife. The next thing I'd like to cover is carrying styles and carrying positions. So as you can see here, one of my favorite for the small to medium sized knives is a neck carry. Okay, just simply on a piece of paracord or a chain and carry it around your neck. Easy to stow away inside the jacket and zip up and keep out of sight for. So that's the reason I like this and it's very handy for just pulling in and out and, and getting it back in and keeps it nice and secure. So it can be carried inverted like this or put through these loops here and carried this way up. Okay, so it's facing up, so there's no fear of you losing this because it's upside down. Right, so that's the neck carry. Right, the next one then is the appendix carry. As it says, it just basically sits where appendix is and it's carried on the belt through the two loops. And you can see that. Personally, I don't like this style of carry, but a lot of people do. So it's just another option for you. And this obviously can be right or left side carried. Okay, and that's the appendix carry. Next carry method is probably the most popular and it's the belt carry. And you can see here, I've actually got a dangler attached to my belt. And I much prefer this because if your pockets are full and bulging out, it's hard to see your knife. So you need to pull it away before you can sheath it. And that's why I like to use a dangler if I'm going to use the belt carry method. But I would say this is probably the most popular way of carrying your knife. And this is in a low riding position. And you can see I can adjust it into this belt loop here, which would bring it up higher. But I find when it's higher, it sticks into your ribs when you sit down. So each style has its pros and cons. And you decide on the day of the race what's got the best suit situation that you're in but this is the belt carry okay the next method then is the scout carry and it's carried to the rear like so seen it in the film the hunted to me this is probably the most stupidest idea i've come across for carrying a knife 
it's okay if you're maybe in the military and you're a sniper and you're lying on the ground and you need it or hunting but apart from that I just think it's completely stupid because it's one of the most dangerous ways of carrying a knife because when you take it out and you try and resheath it the first thing you do is stick it in your arse okay, or cut your back just I think it's stupid I would never recommend it okay so that's the scout carry the next method is the arm pit method and uh, the woodsman that Origin Knives uh, do that's in production at the moment is carried usually in this style underneath the armpit. Personally, I don't like it. I feel there's too much of a risk of sticking it into the armpit because you need to fiddle about here or cut, catching your fingers. So personally, myself, I don't like this method. The next method is the cumberband method. Basically, you're just sticking it into your waist belt. Today, I've got my belt on. And this has stood the test of time, this, you know, they used to carry their swords like this. Obviously with their appropriate sheath, with none of this paraphernalia on it. But just sticking it inside here is a very comfortable way of carrying it. And it can be altered if you need to maybe get up onto a horse and need to ride. You know, you can readjust it. So, the cumberband method, I like that. So the next method then is the baldric carry. And I use this for most of my large knife, like the STV, the Frontline and the Woodsman. I carry this style and all you have to do is adjust these tie knock points up and down the sheath to get it to a place that suits you. And I find for my large knives, this is the most convenient way of carrying them. And it's comfortable and I can sit down you know, I can get up onto a horse if I need to do horseback. I can get onto a motorbike and nothing's affected. I can draw my weapons. Okay, I can shoot. All for this position. You can have it carried and cable tied to the strap like this. Tip down or tip up. Right, another method I carried across here. And in a few of my videos that I've got, like my Tanto Sear and the Origin Cleaver, you'll see I carry them across my chest rig. Through the rivet holes, I use cable ties to secure it onto the PALS webbing system. So a horizontal carry, tip down or tip up, is another three ways. So another um, method you can use is the concealed carry. So this is your chest rig. While I was serving, I used the Articus 4.2 model, the one with the three magazine pouches in the front and the two large utility pouches here. I either carried it concealed along underneath where the magazines sat at the bottom of the pouches there, or in the rear like this. And all I'd done was pull it out, okay, like that, and then back in, like that. So that's a concealed carry.